Hello there. A few days ago, I posted on my channel a demo of a vampire. Yeah. But it's a lot to say about the game I made. Uh, if you haven't seen the demo, we'll I'll start right with it. I'll showcase a bit of the game. Uh, the white scare is a hitbox. It's for debugging purposes. Uh, it's a few lines of code that uh, I would comment and. You want to see this and in the source code they are commented if you want to see the source code it's on my github i will leave the name of it in the description uh i would leave a link to it but uh youtube doesn't allow me to post links in my description for now it's uh similar to the impacts of our games that, that there aren't as many enemies there there aren't as many weapons and uh, well, these are things that uh, can be expanded on uh, later. I just wanted to get the brute base of the game down, so I get the. I understand how it's made, but you can improve later on them easily and add more stuff easily once you get to. Once you know how to make something for the first time. There are a bit of the bugs in the game. Uh, I'll admit it, but whatever. It's. Uh, Kind of my second game that's uh, actually has uh, is fully operable. And if you're curious, I uh, followed uh, well some. Uh, I, this game is done in C plus plus and SFML. SFML is a library. Uh, it's a game programming at a lower level as opposed to a game engine. The difference with game engines is that uh, they have more. Uh, capabilities they they facilitate this the process of making a game but it's it's harder to learn in the beginning and i think uh, if you get the if you understand how to make a game at a lower level if using a library and um, it could be any language it would be easier for you to then move over to a game engine and make a game there i uh, thought about the uh... Uh, what to say in this video, but I think uh, going over all the code would be really bad since uh, it's kind of a thousand lines of code and uh, uh, it would be hard for anyone to follow uh, this uh, a, a long video. So, the, as I said, the source code could, can be found on my GitHub. I will leave the name of, the, of my account and the repository in the description. I use the entity component system uh, design. Uh, if you don't know what this is, don't panic. Uh, I think uh, another way of making games is object-oriented. Like you make a lot of classes, you make an entity class, then you make a player class that inherits from the entity class and you add to it the player class. Then you make a enemy class that also inherits from the entity class and you add some entity fe I mean, enemy features to the enemy class but the uh, entity component system uh, <clears throat> is a bit different uh, if you're curious i follow the tutorial by this guy dave churchill this tutorial uh, it's a college it's it's a cor it's a course from a college professor it's really interesting you should watch it and uh, so the thing is, I have only one entity, and I have this entity has uh, pointers to some components. They are, these are classes, and these components <clears throat> you can <coughs> so you can see some of, some of them here. But to an entity, you can you can add uh, some of these components, and you. You can skip out on some if just you add as many components as you wish for. So the class uh, is what you want it to become. Uh, <clears throat> that was a very bad explanation, but what I mean is that, uh, for example, if you have a player and a player is also an entity, you give him a C transform, uh, you give him the transform component. That this transform component uh, handles position and ve velocity, meaning movement. Uh, give him a sprite component. This is like the image that shows on the screen of the player of the enemies. You give him the input enemy, the input component. For for example, for an enemy, you don't give him the you, you don't give it the input component because uh, you don't want an enemy to 
do something when there's input on the keyboard. You give also an enemy, an enemy both an enemy and a player uh, an HP component, but you don't give an, a weapon an HP component because it doesn't make sense. So you, you can just uh, handle this uh, however you like, so you can uh, make uh, different entities, but the entity class is just this, so you don't need to uh, make a with a lot of classes and inherit from them and do complicated work. Also, I'm using an entity manager that uh, does all the work. Uh, it uh, stores all the entities for 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 a thing. It uh, handles if the entity is there. Like I have a, a live tag and a, li a live uh, bool and I can set it to false. And uh, the entity manager, if it sees that the enemy is dead, you just uh, delete them from from storing them, it uh, also uh, it also handles uh, creating entities. Uh, the constructor for the entity is private, so you can't create an entity out of uh, the entity manager class. So this guy creates it and uh, returns it to you as a pointer, and then you can uh, do whatever you would like to with it. And another part um, is the system part, the systems. I have a, I guess you can see a movement system, animation system, collision system, weapon system, whatever. So this, uh, every function, every one of these systems handle so this, the, the movement system handles the movement for every entity for for the player, for the for the enemies, for the weapons, for whatever it needs. And the great part is that uh, usually once you uh, get done with everything, uh, you don't really need to change the system functions you know you, the systems themselves they they kind of remain the same they don't they don't need to change later on if you add more things to the game so all of these systems deal with the uh with a thing according to their name you can probably figure out that the animation system this is the animation you can see the for some of these the code is kind of short uh, it's a nice way of writing code there's it also looks good it's easy to understand i hope a collision system or whatever enemy spawn system and this is uh or let me showcase something else other spawning the player this is how you create an entity for example you you through the entity manager you have an entity manager in the game class. You ask him to add an entity that is a player. Give him the, the entity tag, and then you for each is, for the components you want to add, you make a share pointer to that component, and then you uh, make a give it a parameter parameters for the constructor. And for the player, I gave a transform component, sprite component, uh, input component, HP component, EXP component, and as you can see, I, I didn't add a damage component because the damage is for the weapons. The player itself doesn't do damage. Only the weapons of the player. <clears throat> Some code will handle everything. It's a uh, sort of code, I think uh, 500, 600 lines, or maybe it's not a lot because for a game you can, for a bigger game, you can probably figure that it takes a lot of work. I don't really want to showcase the whole code because, yeah, as I said, I would presume it would be a boring uh, thing, but uh, you can look it up on my GitHub and look at it yourself. Which would probably be better, so I will uh, do one more thing. I will hide the hitbox <laughs> that I saw the, the, the squares and I will uh, make a one more demonstration of the game. This is probably how my demo looked. We can add more weapons, it's actually easy. I like the code to like, 
the code to handle the weapon logic is already implemented. You, you just if you if I wanted to, I would just you need to create a texture and just create one function that uh, gives the components to the weapon. If you had to, if you want to add, add more monsters, it's very simple. Just look at how one monster was created, and you can replicate that, and uh, the systems themselves only deal with a lot of code, and the entity manager kind of handle almost everything. And I think it's a clean way to write code. And yeah, that's about it. Uh, see ya.